So, you want to turbo your car, huh? But you're a little short on funds? Relatable. Is a cheap turbo worth your money? It's wheelhouse time, baby. Ooh wee. Sure, we've all heard horror stories of cheap turbos blowing up or lasting 100 miles, but as of late, there have been more and more success stories. Stories of people having no issues at all, aside from figuring out what to buy with all that extra cash they have saved. <laughs> A big thick boy thank you to NOS Energy Drink for partnering with Donut and this show. Not only do they help out with Wheelhouse, but they specifically asked to sponsor this week's hot take segment as well. I mean, have you seen the guys like Boosted Voice? They're making piles of power and putting miles per hour on some pretty cheap stuff. They're running nine. Let's review what a turbo actually does. They have a pretty tough job. Their environment is really, really, really hot, being bolted onto your exhaust and all. When bearing tolerances are out of spec, it can cause premature wear, which can lead to oil pushing past the seals and turning into blue smoke coming out of the back of your car. Anything from poor casting processes, to the temperatures molten metal is poured at, to the specific blend of metal being poured can cause imperfections in important parts of the compressor wheel. Don't they check all that stuff? Well, with the advent of the internet came a wave of manufacturing facilities all over the world. Email and computer-aided design, CAD, allowed companies to communicate and share designs with ease. That meant great things for companies in places with expensive labor, like America. Boom! Get things made in places with cheap labor, right? Wrong, kind of. There are all sorts of growing pains with all the countless fledgling factories. Even factories that make good turbos can have mistakes. If there's no one inspecting your turbo before it ships to your door, then you're at the mercy of Lady Luck. And let me tell you, she can be kind of mean sometimes. But luckily for these factories, Many of the companies asking them to make parts provided them with knowledge and cash. In a relatively short time, the ability of these overseas manufacturing plants skyrocketed. But that doesn't mean that all the factories themselves stepped their game up. Is it a complete gamble? In short, yes, but we can try to swing the results in our favor. <laughs> First, buying the cheapest of the cheap is never a good idea. The cheapest new turbo on eBay hovers around 100 bucks. That's ridiculous, it's too cheap, don't buy it. Second, read the reviews. This goes for pretty much everything you buy online, but especially with car parts. Look on the forums, even forums that aren't for your car. There are gonna be a lot of opinions and people throwing their two cents around like grenades. If there's one thing I know about the internet, it's that people like other people knowing their opinions. But if you can find people with actual hands-on experience, you'll find the useful information. Third, look for information about the company you're gonna be buying from. Have they been around for very long? Do they make any overall quality or quality control claims? And most importantly, is there a guarantee or return policy if your turbo does blow up? Beyond checking reviews and snooping on the company, there isn't much you can do to ensure that the cheap turbo you might buy will be a good one. It's still gonna be a bit of a gamble when you're talking a quarter of a price of a brand name turbo. So now it's time to look inwards to find out if you really are about that cheap turbo life. You need to think about the what if. What if it does fail? Do you gamble on another? Or do you shell out the money for a name brand turbo after all? Some folks' philosophy is that since you can buy four or five cheap turbos for the price of one good one, they'll just keep replacing them if and when they fail. They probably will. That brings up another question. Who's doing the work? If you're paying someone to install your turbo, the money you spend on labor will quickly add up and make your cheap turbo a little less cheap. Another big question is how hard is it gonna be? Are we talking a top mount, super easy accessible turbo? If so, great. But on some cars, replacing a turbo or turbos can be a total nightmare, or at least a really long dream where you have a perpetually bloody knuckles. Check out Hilo and you'll see what I mean. You getting on? No, Eddie, not good. What the fuck you think, dude? Did NOS Energy Drink partner with Up to Speed first? Yes. Did they then move on to bumper to bumper? Yes. But did they save the best donut show for last? Hmm. As someone who is completely impartial, someone who has no skin in the game, someone who is 100% unbiased. Yes. Yes, they did. Wheelhouse number one, baby. <laughs> 
Nah, synergy drink, baby. Drink it. <laughs> if you are a bit of a mad scientist, there are a couple other things you can do to potentially improve the odds of cheap turbo success. There have been many accounts of people dismantling their brand new turbos before installing them, cleaning them out a little bit, and putting them back together. Another thing some people have done is rebuilding the turbo with new, higher quality bearings, seals, and rings right out of the box. This only works if you can find rebuild parts for your cheap turbo, but if you can, definitely do that. All of that stuff, replacing, cleaning, and rebuilding the turbo takes time. How much time do you have to spend on this stuff? And again, what will you drive in the meantime? If your project car isn't your daily, then you're probably in okay shape. But if you're playing doctor on your daily, uh, you're kind of rolling the dice. Another thing you can do is to make sure you install it properly. Give it the best possible chance. I'm talking about making sure that your oil and coolant lines are properly routed for the best lubrication and cooling, even if it means a little extra work. If your oil return line is all kinked up, even the most expensive turbo in the world is gonna fail. So here's the deal. Whether or not a cheap ass turbo is a viable option for your car isn't really a simple answer. A lot of it comes down to you. Are you the kind of person that loves to tinker? Are you a bit of a risk taker? If you do your research, read reviews, and accept all the potential outcomes, you might even be able to make your gamble a little less risky. Otherwise, you should definitely save up and get the good stuff. Through my job, I've been super fortunate to meet people from the automotive aftermarket. I'm talking people from Vortec, Field Suspension, Magnuson, a ton of people. And they're the ones that put the blood, sweat, and tears into making the aftermarket so great. So what I think the right thing to do is instead of being impulsive and buying the cheap part from some nameless factory is to reward the people that put the work in and support small businesses, really, because you might unintentionally be taking literal labor away from someone that you might know, you know? It's just the right thing to do. Planners yeah. Nutmobile <laughs> is at the office. So we like to say that we always drive as smooth as peanut butter oh. when we're on the salty streets of America. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're serious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to roll up and everybody's looking at them like, oh my gosh, uh, Nuts! Uh, be nice, see you next time. <laughs>